This video is part of a large series on tube socks. In this one, we're going to make tubes with tuck using a river. The single bed version was covered in another video. This time, we'll work on the double bed version. We'll make a sock to fit ladies who wear size 9 to 10 shoes in U.S. size. Use number 4 yarn, that's also known as worsted weight yarn, and adjust the stitch dial to get 4 stitches 6 rows per inch. Before beginning, insert card number 1, the very most basic card in most sets, into the feeder and lock it on the first patterning row. In case you're uncertain of how to do that, I made a video on it and I will place a link to that video in the program notes. Bring forward every other needle on each bed across a span of 37 needles with both beds set to knit normally. Knit one tight row, usually stitch size 1-1, one, one. then hang the river comb and weights in the zigzag row. There comes the comb up, and you really can't see the wire going in, but it went in. Started from the right edge. Select one part button on each carriage and make sure they are on the opposite sides. And knit two rows. Actually, only one bed will knit each of those passes with the carriage. Adjust both stitch dials to the size for the ribbing. I'm using 4-4. Four, four. Cancel both part buttons because we want to return to normal knitting. Knit one row and that will complete our cast on. Knit the ribbing rows. I used 10 for the sample and that's kind of a minimum. You can do a little more if you want, but these are not designed to be over the calf socks. In other words, you can't make the ribbing inches and inches long and have them fit. Transfer all the river stitches to the main bed. I realize we normally do this with the double eye tool, and that works great, but I've recently found that a loom hook also works great and allows me to keep my hands out of the way better so you can see what's happening. Change to the main stitch size, minus six. Lower the river bed. Remove the river arm and replace it with the main sinker plate. Thread the yarn into the main feeder and you know your machine better than I do. If you need claw weights on the edges for the straight knitting, add them now. Knit 32 plain rows. This is the sock top below the ribbing and above the heel. We are about to embark on the tuck stitch area. If you have not been using claw weights up to now, you probably do want to add them. On Brothers, set the carriage to KC and knit one row for it to select. On Singer type machines, just set the card to Advance and select Tuck on the dial. The Tuck buttons are depressed on Brothers after that selecting row. Knit 32 Tuck rows, moving up the claw weights at the edges if you need to. This will become the heel area of the sock. Cancel Tuck and return the carriage to stockinette settings. This is the process on a Brother. On Singer type, simply rotate the stitch dial to normal or stockinette. Knit 34 plain rows. This is the foot area between the heel and the toe. Now transfer every fourth stitch to the next needle over and place the empty needles out of work. We're beginning a very easy kind of toe shaping here. Knit one row at the present stitch size and then begin reducing stitch size. Experiment and see what works best for you. The goal is to get those stitches tighter and tighter, but they still need to knit well. I settled on lowering the stitch dial one whole number every two rows, and we work six rows with this needle configuration. Needles are now in groups of three. Transfer the center from every group of three over one needle and place the empty needles out of work all the way across the bed. Now every other needle is in work. We will knit six rows in this configuration, also reducing the stitch size as much as possible so that by the last row it's very tight. This is important because on every other needle, the stitches are actually much larger than they seem, and the goal is to get a tidy toe, not a sloppy one. Remove the yarn from the carriage, measure off three times the width of the work that's on the machine, snip the yarn or break it, and insert it into a yarn needle. We're going to use this to gather off the stitches. Work across the entire piece so that every stitch 
ends up in order on the yarn tail. With the sock off of the machine, give the mock ribbing that we've just created at the toe a lengthwise tug. Otherwise, those stitches may not be set properly and the toe won't have the effect we want. Secure the gathered toe very tightly because the only thing keeping it from coming apart is our gathering. Now use the same yarn tail to seam up the side of the sock. You may use any flat and secure seam that you find comfortable and don't mind doing. I prefer on socks such as this to whip stitch all the stitches, every row of stitches together at their very edges in the toe area and then to progress to whip stitching knots only together for the rest of the sock. Here's what I mean. That's a bar, an easy to find piece of yarn. Next row will be much tighter, harder to insert your tool into, but also makes a snugger seam. And those are the knots. That's what I like to whip stitch together. It's comfortable in wear and not tedious to achieve. So there you go. The sock with the yellow is the one that we just created. The completely multicolored sock is a single bed version of the same design. For most women, worsted weight socks are for house socks or maybe in hiking boots because they won't fit in dainty little shoes. If you love socks and knitting well-fitted socks as much as I do, you may enjoy some of the other sock books that I have on my website. They're all on one page and I will put a link in the program notes. Also, don't forget to watch the other videos in this series full of free tube sock patterns.